Apple just blew it out of the park at WWDC. The event was packed and super long, but there's still a ton of things that they did not mention. So today I'm gonna cover 18 of them. And the first one that I wanna get into is the schedule text messages feature. We downloaded iOS beta and guess what? You cannot schedule a text message to Android phones. So now that they're finally getting better, well, it is limited. Now, I do have to give you some more info. Right now, that is not working. And hopefully once RCS is supported, it will. But that shows us that the whole feature is using a server text. So it's not scheduling it from your phone. And we tested it out. And even if your phone is shut off, it will still have that message arrive at the right time. So hopefully Android phones will be supported soon. Now, the second one I want to get into is that Apple is not using chat GPT. I wish they said this clearly because even Elon Musk was confused and putting a bunch of posts on X about this. Apple's intelligence is their own large language model that is incredibly impressive. And we're going to make a full detailed video about this that you have to see. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Now, number three is super cool. Not too long ago, Apple added the charge to 80% percent feature which helps your battery life last a lot longer but I didn't use it because 80% is not enough well now you actually have a slider to go from 80% you can adjust it all the way up to 95% so you can save your battery health but still get a larger amount of battery just like you can in the Tesla and number four is very important Apple had a huge focus on privacy but I wish they talked about it a little bit more the way that they are using their own servers is incredible. It cannot be accessed by Apple, which they mentioned, but even uh, police and the FBI, nobody can get to that data because it is literally not stored ever. The way they set it up, it gets deleted automatically. They have a lot of extra info on this. And because they're using their own servers and building it up, they will be able to actually to step away from other services that are cloud-based like AWS and rely on their own servers, which is amazing for privacy. So you don't have to be using anything that's going to sell your data or store it. Now for number five, we have to talk about the satellite connectivity. It is amazing that you can now send text messages instead of just only for emergencies. But what they didn't mention is that you'll also be able to send photos and even live stream video if it is required in emergency situations, meaning that the connectivity, the speeds, the bandwidth is so much better and much more usable now. And for number six, I have to talk about the Flashlight app. People are posting about this everywhere. And it's a fact that's been redesigned. And not only can you change the brightness, but you can even change the beam angle. I used it yesterday in my backyard at night. It was really, really cool. So it's just a nice little extra bonus feature. And for number seven, I need to talk about the calculator app. That was probably the biggest update to iPad. OS, but that app is actually available on your iPhone. Now you have history finally, and you can go in, you have currency changing, and you can actually use the scribble function to write out different calculations, and it will work and give you the answer just like you have on the iPad with the Apple Pencil. And for number eight, let's talk about the calendar app. I use a default calendar app, and it kind of sucks, and now it's gotten much better. No longer do we just have little circles. It actually changes depending on what you have in there and what calendars you are using. So so it's color coded and you can see multi-day events. And now reminders are also in the calendar app. You still have the other app as well. So that is nice. And you can pinch in or out to see more or less. So it is a lot better. And for number nine, I have to talk about the passwords app because there's a new feature which allows you to create a QR code for saved Wi-Fi connections. So instead of telling somebody your password or taking their phone and typing it in if you don't get that little pop-up to share, well, you could just pull up a QR code and you can also print it for public places so other people can just join. Now, number 10 is a small one, but it is still cool. You will actually get a little warning if you are connected to a slow charger. And that is helpful if maybe your charger is going bad or if you go to places that are public or in a vehicle, you plug in and it's slow charging so you don't waste your time waiting for your phone to charge. Now, number 
Number 11 is also really cool. I haven't tried it yet, but this is vehicle motion cues. So you can go into your accessibility options, enable this, and then it adds some cues on your screen, which is supposed to help with motion sickness. If you are prone to this when traveling, it can help you out. Now for 12, this is a very simple one, but it should have been here a long time. If you go into your control center, you now have a power off button like you do with Android phones. Instead of having to hold down buttons to enable that, it makes it nice and simple and easy. Thank you, Apple. Now, 13 kind of sucks. The Photos app has been redesigned and overall I like it, but for videos, they got rid of the scrubber. You have a traditional one now and you can't scroll through a full screen video anymore. You don't see time code when you're playing a video. So unless you have just the main grid view, you won't see it. And I love that old scrubber. It's a unique feature for iOS and um, being able to see the different thumbs thumbnail points as you're scrubbing along to skip forward. I don't know why they got rid of this and it just does not make sense. Now number 14 makes a ton of sense in your phone app. If you go to the recent, you now have a search bar, which is awesome. And you can actually click to call on the right hand side. So that's gonna save you from accidentally calling somebody, which I've done plenty of times. And then if somebody FaceTime you, it will actually show that and default it so you can FaceTime them back. So that is really nice. And number 15 is eye tracking for iPhone and iPad. Now this is actually an accessibility feature and it's not very accurate, but it is really cool that they're working on this. And that means that you might get Vision Pro style eye tracking in the future to devices that have face ID. So while right now it's just fun and kind of not great, that is pretty cool. Now 16 has got to do with benchmarks. Often when you get a beta, the performance actually goes down. But when I tested it on the M4 iPad, iPad Pro and Geekbench, I got about 100 more points in single core, so it's insanely fast, even though it was already the fastest. And in Core ML, for Geekbench ML, the neural engine also has about 10% more performance, now over 10,000 points. So they have made a lot of optimizations. 17 is a simple one, and this is in the Voice Memos application. It has always been mono, and the quality wasn't great, especially with AirPods. Now they actually enabled stereo recording. If you go into the settings, you can toggle that. And lastly, for number 18, this has got to do with the Vision Pro. Vision OS 2 seemed to just have a few features that should have been there at launch, but there's a couple things that have been improved. Now, my Vision Pro is at my house, so I'm gonna test it later, but people are saying that the pass-through quality has gotten better, even though it was already the best, I still wished it was improved. And also, they added the new hand tracking feature Features, but with that, the polling rate, the amount of times a second it looks at your hands actually went from 30 up to 90. So three times the resolution for scanning, looking at your hands. So it should make it more accurate and smoother. So there you guys go. That's 18 different things that Apple did not mention. If you guys found some other ones, go ahead and comment down below and let us know. Click that circle above to get more great videos on some of Apple's releases and deeper dives. Check out one of those right over there, the Spin Max and I'll see you in the next one.